Hello, and welcome to our overview of USD Composer. My name is Kevin Lyle, and my team and I have built this introductory course to provide you an overview of the features and the user interface we use to utilize those features inside of USD Composer. Let's take some time to learn what USD Composer is. We needed an application that allows us to navigate, build, modify, and render 3D content all in breathtaking photorealism with photo accurate materials in both ray tracing and path tracing. And beyond that, we needed tool sets for animation and physics simulations, as well as visual scripting for adding logic to our scenes. Taking pieces of Omniverse Kit, we put the needed parts together and created USD Composer. It has been built to demonstrate the building of the application we needed, and it is focused on the world building of realistically simulated environments using advanced tools while taking real advantage of USD assets. USD Composer was built both as an amazing tool in its own right, as well as to show you and your team what you can build using tools that Omniverse Kit offers. Before we dive in, we also want to point out that inside of USD Composer is some of the most advanced simulation technology to date, as well as Warp, which allows us to take Python code and run it in CUDA and on the GPU. Courses on this and other specific features are also available on NVIDIA On Demand. Let's move on to some of the features and the interface of USD Composer. Inside of the NVIDIA Omniverse launcher, we can launch USD Composer. If it is not available inside of your library, switch over to the Exchange tab and we can find it listed under Apps. When it finishes downloading, select Launch. Here we are inside of USD Composer. Let's discuss the UI and where various tools can be found. Right in the center, we have our viewport. At the bottom is our content browser, along with additional tabs, such as some sample content, environments, and materials. USD Composer ships with a large amount of content, such as scene samples, HDR skies we can use to light our scenes, an asset library full of simulation-ready content, and over 2,000 materials that are ready to be used. The main content tab, though, is where we can access all of our project assets and connect to a Nucleus server. On the right side, we have the current stage showing us the entities that are placed in our scene. Inside of the stage window, we have a contextual search at the top, a filter option, and additional options. Stage helps us to stay organized by displaying the names of the individual entities. It allows us to set the visibility of them and displays what the entity's type is. Here is also the Layers tab and the Render Settings tab. And finally, on the left is our toolbar containing lots of tools we can use to build, arrange, and modify our scenes. The interface itself is very fluid and allows us to customize our workspace, so we are using the tools that will benefit us the most. For example, we can open the Tools menu and select Array. It will spawn as a floating window, but we can also drag it into any already placed panel or create a new one and when it is no longer needed, we can simply close it. And lastly, we can open any of the toolbars at the top and drag those out to float as needed. With a basic overview of the UI covered and how we can arrange our tools and menus to work best for us, let's take some time to build a scene. We'll be using some of the assets that USD Composer ships with, and we could find those in the NVIDIA Assets tab at the bottom. If you don't see it there, it can be opened by selecting Window, Browser, and choosing Assets. All of the assets in this library are fully ready to be integrated into your scenes. The stage window is going to help us organize and understand the USD assets we are bringing into our project. Let's drag a couple assets into the scene. Down in Residential, drag in both the Appleseed Love Seat and the Appleseed Coffee Tables FAR01. What we want to point out is the flexibility of the stage window and how USD Composer, and in fact all of Omniverse, takes advantage of USD assets. 
we can see that world is our base entity and its type is X form. We also have an environment entity that holds the sky, a distant light, a looks folder, and a ground mesh. So both world and environment are each parents to whatever is underneath them. If we select world and move it around the scene, its child entities will follow. That is the same with the environment. We can create a new X form to parent this furniture to by right clicking in the stage window, select create and choose X form. See how it created it under world by default. This is because world is set to our default prim. In this case, we don't want that. So to remove it from world, we could just drag it down. Now, when we add the couch and the table to this new X form, it will take control over them. I'll quickly rename this to furniture. Okay, let's save our scene before we carry on. Control S will bring up the Explorer. Find the location on your drive or inside of a running Nucleus server that you want to save to. I'm just going to save this into my library. I'll create a new folder named Furniture Demo. And inside I'll create another named Worlds. This USD scene is going to be named Appleseed. Currently, these two assets and the floor are being lit by a dome light named Sky and a distant light named, of course, Distant Light. Let's add in a couple more lights under the environment X form. While we could bring in new lights and move them into environment later, we could instead set this X form as the default prim by right clicking it and selecting it as the new default prim. Right click and select create then light, then choose any light here to add to the scene. I'll select a sphere light and modify it a bit. See that it was automatically added to the environment entity. With the light selected, the property window changes to display many contextual settings related to lighting to give us full control of it. What we want to do now is export only the lighting as its own USD file and bring it back in as a payload, exactly the same way as the furniture was brought in. I'll move the ground entity and the looks folder into world. Then right click on environment and select save selected. Inside of our furniture demo, I'll create another new folder named lighting. Inside, we can save this as a new USD file named lighting underscore sphere light. We'll need to delete these current entities in the scene. Now we can drag this new file in as a payload. We can transform them and modify properties as needed, and the changes are saved only inside our current scene. Because this is a payload, it can be turned off if needed. What will remain when we turn it off are the changes that we made, so when the payload is returned, it will be as we changed it. I'll select our lighting sphere light, scroll down to payload in the properties panel, and turn it off. Because I moved the sphere light, we can see that there is the lighting sphere light entity, and under raw USD properties, we can see the changes that were made to the light. When set back on, the changes are kept. So what is happening is we have brought in our lighting scene as its own entity, and we can edit the objects within to fit our needs without modifying the original export. This is a powerful way of using and reusing assets and a great entry into yet another powerful feature that USD provides us called layers. To demonstrate layers, we're going to move to another scene that has much more going on. They are vitally important to making sure that our world is built in a non-destructive way. What we have set up here is a collection of assets that have been modularly brought into our scene named Chess Set. The scene itself contains all the pieces and the board, as well as all the other assets we'll see shortly. Each layer here contains what are known as opinions. These are ways that we can influence layers below to the changes we've made in layers above. Here we have our layers for this world. Our bottom layer is named lighting, and it of course contains the lighting in our scene. 
Then we have Chess Piece Catalog, which contains the board and one of each of the six individual chess pieces. And that's it. We can expand our scene now by adding new layers above to change, add, or remove different entities. If we turn on the layer Chess Layout, we can see that the board is full of pieces. This is because that layer has taken the entities below it and transformed them as needed. There's an issue though. All the pieces are the same color. Let's turn on our materials layer to fix that. This layer is only changing the materials that are placed on our assets. With our chess set ready, we need a background to place it in. So let's also turn on our background layer. And now we can see this whole scene is set up with materials and a background. My team member, Paul, is working on his end and added a new layer aptly named Paul's Opinion. Because he created a new layer, all his changes are unique only to his layer, keeping the rest of the scene as it was. If we turn it on, we can see that he has made a few moves of the pieces on the board. Now another team member, Ken, has created his own layer to change things as he sees fit. After turning his layer on, we can see not only that he has moved the pieces around, but also moved other entities in the scene, and his layer also contains material edits. When previously we had black and white pieces, Ken has changed them to gray and gold. Creating these layers allows our various team members to use them all within our own stage, and USD Composer allows for them to be worked on in a live collaborative environment on a per layer basis. Before we return to our Appleseed project, let's take a moment to discuss the library of materials I spoke about previously. Here is a new minimal scene where we can preview how to create a material inside of Omniverse as well as access the library of ready-to-use materials. To create a new material, navigate to the top menu and open Create. And look inside the Material section. Omniverse has many types of material templates that we can start from when we need to create a custom material. We'll stick to the Omniverse Physically Based Rendering, or Omni PBR material, which is the default material inside of Omniverse. If we needed a nice red material to add to the sphere, we can change the color tint value to red. And this one looks good. And simply drag and drop the material onto the mesh. This is the default look of the material interacting with the default stage lighting. I encourage you to explore the possibilities available to you here for your own custom materials. Alongside these materials, USD Composer also comes packed with a library of ready-to-use, customizable materials for a huge variety of needs. We can drag any of these materials to our meshes to help us quickly achieve high-fidelity renders. For example, I'll grab this Ash Planks material and place it on this cube. And for the cylinder, I'll try to find a really reflective material like this aluminum polished. I'll quickly drag it on and it's applied. We can just as easily customize these materials. To access the material on a mesh, we can find the material in the properties panel and open it. From here, we now have the used material open and can change the color along with any other property with immediate results. Returning to our Appleseed project, I want to demonstrate a very useful tool that will assist us in more accurately laying out the entities that make up our scenes. USD Composer ships with an advanced set of physics simulation tools, and they go far beyond what this course covers. But one tool in particular is very useful in our everyday world building, and it's called Zero Gravity. Because we will often be mixing many assets from a variety of sources, we will also have the need to make sure that entities sit comfortably on top of whatever they're on, whether it's a pallet, the floor, or a fruit bowl. To use it, we activate the zero gravity tool located in our toolbar. Let's use this tool to place the fruit naturally in the bowl. To do this, we need to add a few markers to these entities so the physics engine knows if it's to be stable or moving. Select the bowl. 
The red box icon indicates that the selected bowl is to be a static object, which is what we want. Now select the three fruits. Because these are groups of several meshes, be sure to select the parent X form so they move together respectively. With the oranges and lemon selected, add a dynamic marker by clicking on the green box. Adding the dynamic marker on these will tell the simulation that you want them to move and only stop when influenced, which in this case will be when they hit the bowl. To specify which meshes you want to simulate, make sure they are selected. Okay, let's try this. I've selected bowl footed and can simulate the drop into the bowl. Now that they are in there, we can end the simulation. Remember back when we were discussing layers, a record was kept of the transform changes. We can see those changes here too from the physics simulation. So a variety of simulations can be kept here as their own unique layer. When defining what USD Composer is, we talked about how we built it using modular pieces all provided by Omniverse Kit. We call those extensions, and Kit has a large library of ready-to-use extensions for all kinds of tools. For example, the zero-gravity tool we just used to place the fruit in the bowl is an extension, as is the viewport and the content browser and the toolbar and each individual mechanic inside of USD Composer. We can see what is active and what is available by navigating to Window and opening the Extensions browser at the bottom. This is the current collection of tools, mechanics, resources, and all sorts of things created by our teams here or by third-party developers. Searching for Zero Gravity shows us the tool we used in the toolbar. If I set it to Disabled, it will be removed from the toolbar and from USD Composer. Because the transformation of the assets have already been recorded in the layers, they remain there. We encourage you to explore tools you can add to either USD Composer or your own applications built from Kit. Now that we have a solid foundation of USD Composer, a few of its features and how to find them, we are ready to dive in with our own content and build out our own scenes. In this course, we opened USD Composer from the Omniverse launcher. We discussed what USD Composer is and what kinds of features it has been built with using the Omniverse Kit framework. After building our scenes with some provided content, we brought in a light to assist us in demonstrating how to build our worlds using payloads of other USD content. We took a dive into USD layers and broke down how they can assist us by adding modifications non-destructively and work collaboratively to add opinions to our scenes. We then returned to our original scene and quickly arranged some entities inside of a bowl using the zero gravity tool. And lastly, we looked at the various extensions that come shipped with USD Composer. This was a lot, and there is so much more to learn and build. Omniverse and its various applications are constantly growing, and we're excited for all that you and your teams will create with them. Remember to check back in to NVIDIA On Demand, where we have a ton of learning content available to walk you through it. We'll see you there.